Hi, we are going to talk about automation and emerging technology. Automation, typically, you are talking about robots. Emerging technology can be many, many new technology, like big data, for example. That's one emerging technology. We see the top automation. Automation, for instance, in here, you remember um, you go to the airport, then you can print your own tickets. That's automation. You go to a grocery store, you can check out yourself. That's automation. You go to ATM, you're going to withdraw some money. That's automation. ATM is the best example. You're doing automation. Viewing from those three examples, you can see automation means you, a person, communicate with a machine, not via another person. Before ATM, you go to a bank with a cashier, one person to another person, then the cashier going to communicate with a machine to withdraw some money for you and give it to you. You can consider the cashier is the middleman. Automation cut out the middleman. Before automation, what we have is person A to person B, then person B to a machine. With automation, we're going to have person A to a machine. We'll see more and more use of this automation, save money for the company, save time. You can handle, you don't need to talk to another person and another person talk to a machine and talk back to you. So you can do that. One more example for automation, McDonald. You go to McDonald, you go to order some food. Now, many of that they want you to punch in your order in a machine. You don't go there and say that, hey, I want a big, uh, one number one, two number two. You don't need to do that. You punch in. Once you punch in, your order will go to the kitchen. The kitchen will prepare your food. Then you go there to pick it up. That's it. It saves a lot of people and save a lot of level cost here, labor cost here. Use of automation is like everywhere and that's automation we're talking about. The real automation or the significant of automation is robot here. You see the robot here? And this robot show you they can do some cars, some car, you're going to make an uh, automobile, yeah using the robots is easy. Robots here and there, they are not tired. They don't have emotion. They typically, they don't make mistakes. Typically, they don't make mistakes, not like human beings. We are only human, right? If you are doing 99.9, .9, you're doing very, very good job. But the robot can do 100. So that's, we cannot compete with the robot. With more and more used robots, more and more people are going to lose their job. That's the fact and that's the trend. And can we change that? Probably not. So that's all I know. And that's your robots here. Here, a robots here. And robots is used to take care of a lot of uh, baby boomers, including me. A lot of uh, baby boomers that get in their age 60, 70, and they need people, nurse, to take care of them. We don't have enough nurse. A nurse is too expensive. A nurse, they're human being, they have emotional. They may make a incorrect judgment because they're, they're, they're tired or they're not happy or any other reason. Robots, typically, they don't make mistakes. When it, whatever mistake they made is made by human being, your programs. Your programs got some hardware, software, some problem. That's why robot makes some mistakes here.
So that's different here. We're going to see more and more use of robots here. And there are certain countries they really need to pay more attention to robots here. Um, like in Japan, they like perfection. They don't really tolerate failure. Then robots for them. And also some countries, they have low birth rate. No young kids, no young people. They have to use robots. So robots are going to be the trend. We're going to see more and more use robots to get rid of the jobs from to take over jobs from people. One type of use robots. You see a robot, you look like human. We mimic ourselves. Yeah, oh, these robots look like human beings. There are many, many robots. They just don't look like human at all. Like one is like look like Roomba, and that's a kind of small red, uh, uh, small, uh, round, uh, flat uh, device that used by like UPS. Then they change. Used to be, you work for UPS, you're going to go there and find a package that may be heavy. Then you need to, okay, you drive a machine, you drive a car, and you go there, you lift up the package, then you move from point A to point B. Would you use the robots here? The robot, they can do that for you. It doesn't look like human. It's a small stuff. They can dip up very heavy stuff here, package, then they can come to you. So that's the use of robots here. We're using more and more robots um, in many, many ways you don't know. And there are many, many companies, they have spent lots of time, investment, on robot development. One example is that Google. Thinking about Google, you think about Google Chrome. More than that, more than that. Google, they are using a lot of robots here. That's a new future. Google cannot be based on Google Chrome, Google oh, Map to make enough money. No, they need to um, get involved to a new field. One field is robots here. You see here robots here. Okay, so this is the human being and talk to robots here. Uh, hmm. Step number one, robot is the tool. Step number two, it's kind of like equally, right? Step number three, I don't know. Maybe robots will rule and human being will listen to a robot here. Maybe. That's, uh, yeah, in the long term, I think that may be the case here. Robots here. So you like to say pros and cons. Pros, yeah, robot can do a lot of work for us. Cons, robot can replace us. AI, artificial intelligence. What is AI? Robot, you have some software, some program, so they can do this and that. Um, example, you ask robot to do task A, B, C. You program that way, then your robot can only do A, B, C. But with AI, they can learn. Once they do A and B and C, they can learn after a certain time, maybe a very short period of time, they learn how to D to D because D is similar to A plus B plus C. So they see the D, the new stuff, they say, whoa, this is the A plus B plus C, then I can do D. Now they can do A, B, C, D. Then they may be A, C, D. They can do an E. So with the AI, robot can learn. That's what I was saying, they can learn. We make the modulized component here so they can learn. Um, like if you can drill the ball, you can jump, you can shoot the ball, you can pass in the ball. Whoa, you are a basketball player and robot can do that. You program a robot to drill the ball, to pass in the ball, to shoot the ball, then or to defense. And a robot can be a basketball player. That's the start. And IBM, yeah, also doing a lot of uh, uh, AI. AI, this is nothing new. AI has been with us for about 20 years now. Just uh, the development, development of AI is kind of slow here. There are some reason. Uh, one reason is we don't really don't want this AI to be too 
smart, then we cannot control. People want to control. You want to make your robots smart and sm smarter and smarter, can do more things for you, but you're also afraid of robots can going to control you. You rely on your robots. Robot may one day they don't listen to you. So that's a problem. Or at least replace your job. Yeah. So what is what is AI what is intelligence here? Intelligence means you can learn here. Robot. Yeah, just talking about different stuff here. Mutual learning aiming to change us computer process and learn in manner inspired by human brain here. Well, this again still showing that human being trying to control the robot they have created. So that's this kind of um, thought here. But in long run, we do have a concern robot may be the boss and we may be controlled by the robot. Even how carefully we have planned. It's just a um, logical thinking. You make something too powerful, too smart, and you are not a powerful, not a smart. Guess what? So who's the boss? So that's AI, see here, artificial intelligence. Yeah, this guy looks like Einstein. Oh, yeah, he himself, huh? <laughs> so, so, so AI application, there are many, many applications, artificial intelligence application here. And that, you can say that AI is to serve people. That's the first stage here. So we want robots to serve us. For instance, you want a robot to cook your breakfast. That's easy. You can program Monday I want to eat this, Tuesday I want to eat that. That's not AI. Once the AI, the robot can sense your mood. See how can a robot sense my mood? Based on um, your movement, your gesture, your um, your heart temperature, uh, your temperature, your heartbeat, they can sense you are in a angry mood, in a happy mood, something like that. Then you want in a celebrating mood, then they can be based on that to prepare something you may need. So that's AI now. So AI means, uh, in this case, just many, many choice here. Still limited amount of choice here. So that's robot here, robotic here. Emerging technology here, biotechnology here, we're going to use more and more. Yeah, biotechnology, basically, they are based on, like, they are trying to find some DNA. Yeah, we know that DNA try to cure some kind of disease here, and that's biotechnology. If you say that all biotechnology human being is very advanced uh, with the COVID-19, I don't think so. I think um, when there's a new virus that takes two years for human being to come up with a solution, hopefully we can come up with some solution. That's two years too long here. Yeah. Many people will die for that. So we are not like a comparing to that. And so this guy, Biotechnology, thinking about one example is a virus. Narrow technology here, narrow technology basically make it small. Make the things very small here. And you see here, small as possible. You make things very, very small. Small. They don't occupy a lot of space here. That's the narrow technology here. And that's uh, important when you are still doing a like a surgery here, which will go back to the biotechnology here, that they can make stuff very small, then they can um, can penetrate uh, your body, your your cell, then they can do a lot, uh, lots of uh, uh, medical treatment for you. So narrow technology has been used to say this drug delivery system here target on problem. That's what I was talking about, problem area here. You have a good cell here, like a cancer. You have a bad cell here, 
than that cell here. The size is very tiny, but with narrow technology, the treatment can treat a, a good cell. No, don't treat a good cell here. Can kill the best cell and keep the good cell here. That's very tiny here, so you can do that. So, human enhancement here, yeah, as I can see, uh, the AI going to make us more smart, smarter here. This is a dangerous sign here, human enhancement here, right? Uh, half people, half robots, that's in movies here. That uh, movie, just something in long term may look like that here. So human enhancement here. Uh, how you enhance human being? Um, we are good, but sometimes we are emotionally. We get angry, we make wrong decision, but machine won't do that. Can they mentally make us more like a machine here? Um, technically, yes. And, but not everybody like this idea. So far, I don't think many people like that idea. So, so that's the problem, human enhancement here. Yeah. Yep. I guess that's really for our next generation, the young generation to worry about, about this robotic stuff here, new technology stuff here. People create more and more advanced emerging technology, and the emerging technology may come back to control the people. So that's something I would like to share with you.